All right, so let's get this party started. Yeah. So, Sirs and Madam's back, and what we're going to do is Ruby Volume One soundtrack, which I've I've seen Volume One through Six. I've, I've seen Volume One through Six. And Matthew has only seen up through two. The first two. Which is why you've seen him in the other set of videos with Sterling and Mary, but the other side of that is on. Well, as of today, filming this this Sunday. He'll be watching all of Volume Three yes. with Sterling and Mary. One of us. One of us. Yeah. Hoogle, hoogle, one of us. <laughs> so, but we figured we'd go back and watch uh, Volume One soundtrack or listen to Volume One soundtrack because all three of us are professional musicians, and I've had time to digest this over a bit of time. Me too. And so is yeah. So is Gustav. Mm, so most of it, I think. Yeah. Ma I'm the new boy. Yeah. Matthew hasn't. He's heard the tunes, obviously, just listening to. The first, or watching the first, right. you know, That's chapters, a and the yeah. first volume one and whatever, but hasn't like had a chance to digest it, so to speak. Yes. So, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to get started, and we'll do obviously the opener is going to be first, which is this will be the day. So let's do that one first, and then we'll right. have a little discussion about it after <clears throat> the fact. So, all right. So, all right. So here we go. Why isn't that in the opening? <laughs> That's great! I like that a lot. You mean when they actually use it for the show? Yeah. And yeah, he yeah. loves when like things drop out. I love Coral. I love <laughs> like gang vocals, especially gang vocals on an instrumental dropout. That makes me very happy. Oh no. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better in subsequent volumes, Jeff starts to lean on that a little bit more. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You give you get more thick like high wood chords and stuff, and happens a lot more. Because that is a comment to make, is that a lot of this girl's tracks are very solo voce, like mm -hmm. not a lot of harmonies done. Well, I think part of that may also be the evolution of the show, like her going from just her to being a group of friends and getting more and more, so. I guess. Maybe. Yeah. A plausible theory, for sure. Heheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheh
The song's in the song's in D. Um Oh yeah, here we go. Here's the <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's, here's the perfect pitch rain man uh, description of what's going on. Uh I'm going to be crucified for it. I know. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. Um, so, well, what I like, so the song's in D minor, and a lot of the chorus, so a lot of the chorus, she rolls and ends a lot of her notes either, like, sorry, a lot of the time she ends phrases on the two, she ends on an E, so it creates this weird natural dissonance at the end of certain phrases in the chorus, which I like a lot, I don't hear that a lot, um... And that's, it's, it's nice because it helps the lyrics pop, I, or at least it does for me. Um, uh, it's just a nice touch. I, I don't know if, because, did the girl who sang this write the lyrics as well? Uh, well, so her dad is the main songwriter. Jeff Williams. Okay. Right. And so he writes the lyrics, but she actually... Did she write the vocal line? They, well... That's what I'm curious to know. I don't know if it's necessarily, like a, let's say, a 50-50 collab. Right, right, right. But at the beginning, has, he probably does more stuff at the beginning. Yeah. Well, but she has input. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, I really like the vocal line in this song. I think... Um, I, I like... I, I like how her voice weaves through, you know, the harmonies and the structure of this song um, quite a lot. I think... I mean, it's it's pretty simple, but it's nice. I personally would love to hear more uh, harmonies, uh, but but that's that's you know that's me with like power metal tendencies. That's not is that's certainly right. not to say all of these are gilding of the lily. It's a wonderful song. I think it's very well written, and she sounds very good on it. So I asked I asked her at one point if she had perfect pitch. Right. She goes no. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> she just has she just has a hella good ear. Even She's at got a young it. Age. Yeah. So um, in the as far as like the song goes, like the songwriting part of it or the lyric writing part of it, not bad. Um, there's a know. lot of stuff you'll notice. This um, a lot of people will take, and we probably should have said this in the beginning, but that's fine. So the um, the songs are canon in a way. Oh, mm -hmm. But okay. there's some artistic license a little bit with that. So it's not like, oh, well, it says this, so it's 1,000% that, maybe. Right. But this, what I think makes this really complete, as far as like a soundtrack goes along with the show, or the music that's done along with the show, is the... That's the right way to say it. Um, it gives you the background insights on certain things. Oh, so, yeah. So even though a character doesn't say this outright within the context of the show, there like, seems to be times where lyrical there's, motifs. Yeah, there is a song or something that's been written on them as part of the soundtrack that gives you what their background motivation might be, or, their, kind of inner voice, or their inner voice, or something. Yeah, yeah, so some subtext. Yeah, yeah, yeah what yeah. what they might be feeling, or what they might be um, a context, or something like that. That that's might clever. be that might be off camera so to speak. Oh. Mm. So um, there's a tune later, and I'll point it out, where, um, and we'll get to it in this specific video, but um, where it's supposed to be, it's Ruby that's speaking. It's from her point of view. Mm -hmm. That's what the song's written from. But it doesn't seem very characteristic of the character that you've come to know from watching the show. And so a lot of people are like, well, you know, it could be this or that. My thought process is, well, why couldn't this be her thought process before we got introduced to her. Yeah. Mm. So like this could have been something. So Ruby's what sixteen in the show, Four, fourteen in the show, fourteen, fourteen fifteen. Start, yeah. So or, yeah, it starts at fourteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why couldn't that? Why couldn't this tune? And like I said, we'll get to it later. Be the process that she went through mentally when she was twelve. Huh. And part of that puts her at the character that we then get introduced to. Or yeah, something. it's a prequel cool so, song, basically. That, so, yeah, so, that theory would be interesting. So keep some of that uh, like in mind when we're like watching some of it. That, Bring down is that the, the one with, with also singing with Yeah, them? yeah. So okay. like, so I the soundtracks, I see them as canon, but not... L linear. Not, not linear, but like... Not law. More like suggestions. No, I, yeah. Well, not even, probably even more no, than no, that, no, but no, it's, I, not I, like, I it's not like, it's not like, it's not encyclopedic knowledge. Yes, yes. Yeah. You know, 
So um, what I was what I was saying before is uh, the only other thing is that because uh, I've noticed in all her songs, and what I really enjoy about the singer is that she uh, she pushes she she either knows where her high like the top of her range is, and she makes sure to put notes in there that puts Push. her puts it puts mm-hmm. it there or pushes it. So as a singer, uh, I'm a sucker for that, and I really like that. And I would have loved to see. Uh, what she would have done if she tried some like lower harmonies because I haven't known it uh, oh, She just didn't she, uh, that's, oh, yeah. You'll that, get to those later. No, yeah. no, that's just the gilding yeah. of like lovely yeah. song I says yeah. I my curiosity is to see how she would work harmonies is yeah. in- Interesting and I'm okay. excited to see yeah. how that will go. All right, right, so this next one is the red it, trailer it, Well, yeah red like roses which was the red trailer basically is what the music that was used for the red trailer so I get that and Ready? Mm-hmm. cool. Here we go. All right, here Let's we go. go. <laughs> Six, seven chords. <laughs> Yeah, Matthew. It's a magical now. <laughs> yeah, suddenly we're Pirates of the Caribbean. Or Robin Hood, like... <laughs> we're in Spain. Wait, what? Okay. I'm immediately <laughs> a fan of... <laughs> this is originally from Spain, it's called Ruffle. <laughs> <laughs> Ruffle. If I'm remembering right, the rest of this is instrumental. Like yeah. the way it appeared on, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, right, yeah, we're not actually watching the, the trailer itself. Right. Time change and key change. Oh, now that's very pirate. Oh my god, that's so... <laughs> well, this just shot to the top of my favorites. Mm -hmm. This shot's at the top of my favorites. I wouldn't have thought to put tambourine right there. Right? It's a great touch. But it fits. It fits really well. Oh, I love that. Because it it gives it that snare quality Mm -hmm. without being like, snare! (laughs) Snare (laughs) quality. Yeah. Because you kind of heard the the pitch of the tambourine head as well in that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was lovely. That was... That doesn't sound a lot like of the show that I see, but that's fine. It was meant to sort of draw you in anyway. Well, no, no, no. Oh, that's fine. That's Did you notice the lyrics there? It's supposed yes. to be red trailer, yes, but, it, yes, but, yes. It threw, but it, it throws in all four colors. But it described each character. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, like, like, you just like... Uh, well, and that's what I mean by, like, so the subtext. <laughs> well, yeah, the term that I totally, like, left my brain earlier when we were talking was... 
it seems, and you'll see this more and more, but the songs really foreshadow that's, what, that's the what's word. coming up. But it's not a thousand percent a spoil. Like sometimes it's kind of spoilery, but it's not so outright. Yeah, that you're like because you don't know what's oh, going to happen. Yeah, you're like okay, so this concept is coming. Right. How are they going to get there? And to what extent is it going to happen? And then what are the details? Like, that's not necessarily, but it just kind of gives you this alluding of like, like a good. Do you want to talk about like the math we figured out? Like, how far ahead it, it, it predicts? Or is um, that too much? Was that too spoilery? Because well, like, the trend we noticed in the soundtrack was certain. Yeah, songs, that you like, and I talked about. So, yeah. um, where in the timeline we'll, it fits won't bother me. Well, as long as we'll I don't get, know, like, well, we'll, we'll talk about that in general when we get to that tune. Okay. Because. I it's something that I noticed, and then I talked to you about, and you're like, "Yeah, that totally makes sense." And then we went back and we started going and through. And they does it in every it. season. It's every almost soundtrack like, they do. What he puts like a song in. That There's something that like harkens in, harkens to. Uh, well, we'll talk about it. We'll yeah, okay. but it harkens to two seasons later. Oh, fun! So yeah, yeah, two, we talk, yeah so it's no, two we, seasons. We later. were talking yeah. about that for a second. I like there was there was always a a, fl a, a hint or a flavor. Of something that you would see much farther down the line in the soundtrack now, and it kind of and plays he throughout. Yeah. That way when you when you hear it, when it actually happens, and you hear the music, your brain goes, and you don't sense, oh, yeah. sense memory. Yeah, like, ah. and, that, and that in what we noticed was that actually comes down to it's a tune that is written that is then actually not used in the current volume, but shows up two volumes later. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, oh I remember so this. You won't That's actually hear it in, yeah. in the show right, until exactly. two and volumes later. Like, Wait, yeah. And then, um, so the first time it's really obvious. Then mm -hmm. Yeah. Do so we hear that? There's one tune in this one that shows up in volume three, which does you that, will catch in Does that three. track only happen in the trailer, or is it somewhere in the show? So... The themes the one that we are just heard. so the themes that are in the back, the overall themes within all these tunes, yeah, do show up later as score. Oh, sometimes okay, later, okay, but okay. not necessarily. Yeah, it doesn't always show up as an like in the foreground tune, or something like that. Yeah, so, so a little more diegetic in some are, or not. Program not now. <laughs> no diegetic and non diegetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the audience who aren't <laughs> familiar with film <laughs> and TV scores, would you care to like? Describe uh, diegetic and non-diegetic music. Uh, music that happens within the context of a scene to give it uh, to give it context, and those songs that are taken outside that are just kind of yeah. So you've got even I mean even more of a basic explanation is if you have music that's happening in the background in TV or film or anything like that, and it's it's music that the actors or the characters can't hear. It's there for your benefit to flush out more like when you emotion. Hear that, that low rum of a, of a villain about to show up. Yeah, or yeah, right, yeah. Strings. Like you, they don't know what's about to happen, but like That's, you hear like, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. like you hear Jason's theme, yeah. or you hear the ah, ah, you're like, alright, he's, he's here somewhere, yeah, but right. the characters and stuff that That's show up don't That's non-diegetic. Mm -hmm. and, oh, okay. and then diegetic music would be, uh, so, well, for perfect example is volume one of Ruby in the very first episode, there's the the opening music for the entire yeah volume right that's what she's listening to on her headphones, headphones. Oh, and yeah. that's what she turns off that would be diegetic music because the character is actually able to hear and react or interact yeah. with, with the music that. is mm -hmm. written into the which story. why there's this really great scene in Archer yeah <laughs> where one of the characters hears like the ominous music it's uh, Carol yeah Carol slash Cheryl and ends up freaking out and being like, okay, it's non-diegetic. Like, she's talking herself out of like, hearing it. So, anyway. That's I funny. forgot about that. So I forgot it, about that. I'll have to find that later. That's that song funny. made me so happy, though. Oh, my God. I'm such a sucker for key changes, and we had so many. Yeah, right? Uh, so, this next one's going to be Mirror Mirror, which is the white Weiss. trailer, which is yeah. Weiss's background Weiss basically the schnee. Did they, they why didn't why didn't they like lean into the German and say Weiss? Like why didn't they call her well, maybe because Weiss doesn't have a good yeah. connotation. Be because it. it was made in Austin, Texas and not Berlin. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. This is digging a little deeper than we need to at this right, point. Right. It's not it's not true anime where they're just like they go into it when they go to culture and change. <laughs> oh, sometimes true borrowing. anime screws it up too. Alright, All right, so here's the white trailer. So yeah, um, which the official tune or 
like Red Like Roses, this is Mirror Mirror. It's mm -hmm. the official uh, title. I really like her vocal timbre, like both in this and the last one. It feels very lullaby-esque, mm -hmm. but like in all the best ways, because it's a little bit foreboding. Right. So. Well, and on top of that, her age matches the age of the characters. It just lends this whole other dynamic. Right, another you know, layer. Yeah. I'm getting you know, like heavy Kingdom Hearts vibes listening to this, so I'm just like, <laughs> that's fair. Right. Oh god. Okay. They really do just love their sudden key changes. <laughs> That's a high note. <laughs> Is this the same 14 year old girl? Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. And this music would be considered diegetic because Weiss actually sings this song. Yeah, she point. does. Yeah, her chest voice and her head voice are two very different things. I like them both. <laughs> it's so sudden! I like it! I love it a lot. Yeah. Just go for it. Yeah, Piccadilly Third. More Piccadilly Third. <laughs> More Piccadilly Third. Uh, <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with a Piccadilly Third. <laughs> we, you can debate that. That that is a debatable concept. I've actually uh, I played a Piccadilly Third by accident once. <laughs> wait, you wait. You had the third of the chord on the bass trombone. So it was a trombone quartet, uh, uh. and it was wait wait. And so we get to the end of it, and I totally played E flat instead of E natural. Yeah. So I made it completely minor, and then realized what happened, and I went, uh... <laughs> 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 I slid up to it, I slid right up to it. No and, one will know. And the other, the other three guys were like just holding, they were holding the cord. Was this on a concert? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, a rehearsal, they were like... No, oh, this was like in the in performance. No, we were. Oh, that's great. It wasn't. It wasn't on stage. We were out. Um, we were out in like a um, kind of big entry hall okay. for, for a concert that was going to happen. Was it like GBA? No. Oh, okay. Athens Symphony. Oh. Mm. oh okay. <laughs> so like, okay. the trombone section went out and did this thing. Yeah. You know, and before we played this, the show after the fact. And so I just remember it was like, oh yeah, that's right. Because immediately <laughs> oh. after it happened and like, you know, Doug, we cut off and all of us just burst out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure everyone that was standing there was just like, what are they doing right now? Yeah, just, just like, uh, that, hmm, I'm not going to judge, like, I'm not going to judge this piece based on the last trailer's song. Um, and this one was simple er. Which I have no issue with. Um, right. As I as I said before, I really I I really like how so far these last two pieces have felt very lullaby esque, at least in their opening presentation. 
the the kind of soft open. Right. That's that's nice. Um, if these songs are as attuned to the characters as we've been, either like sur- oh, sur- cat, oh, hi, cat. cat uh, as as we've been like sur- <laughs> surmising or at least theorizing. I guess this is now where I would be putting these two songs together, because the Ruby's track is very all over the place in the context of referencing it to this song. This song was very linear. Yes. The last one was a lot more different. Yeah, Red, I, Red Like Rose is kind of like, it sets up the other characters a little bit. But, but that whole instrumental section, there's a lot going on, and in this one, there's it, mm-hmm. it's a little bit more driving, it stays in four, it um, still have those key changes out of nowhere. It's just like, rug. <laughs> I think if you watched the trailers where you saw the action too, I think that might yeah. help with the okay. form of the song. Because they, they do kind of play with the visuals, or they're, they're written along with the visuals on screen. I am taking a very roundabout method to the question of, like, is is there... Does the linearness of this song and the non-linearness of the last song both play into the characters that are being portrayed or is that me reading too far into it maybe reading too far into it except that with the more you find out about weiss and her upbringing and her personality and stuff like that right you could make an argument for that i was um, as it it applies to this tune specifically i mean the basic foreshadowing guess i would make for weiss is like you know very regimented strict and yeah. cut and dried up bringing okay. of, of order so if if that that could be very much the I'm reading too much into it but I don't know Ruby's very off the wall and Wise seems to be very regimented so that was just a guess as to why they had because they were very different yeah so. also one last comment uh, this song also gave a lot of opportunity for I, what is the singer's name so I stopped saying Casey Lee Casey Lee, Lee Williams Casey Lee Williams so uh, just, yeah. uh, oh, I loved uh this get, this song and the last song gave a lot of opportunity for Casey to use like her head voice more so than uh, chesting out high notes. And there's a high A in there that just soars above the orchestration. And uh, you'll you'll see it in the reaction where I just I was talking to you and that was just like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he it was gorgeous. And and that's that's just me being pedantic. But I was just like, oh, that's such a pretty note. I love that a lot. Okay, so this next one is. Um, Blake. Black trailer, which would be Blake from, Sh- from Shadows. One of my, it's my of the four trailers, it's my favorite musically. Edgy boy. <laughs> <laughs> Given her, when you'll you'll watch her character. This this song is very. That's just me taking the low blow. When a song yeah. from Shadows, why? I, I how can't I? But admit, but because of her semblance, it makes sense. Oh no no no! For sure. <laughs> That's kind of the point. Yeah, I, I know. All right, I'm so just taking the low road. <laughs> here we go. Also, these whoever's writing the piano, I love so much. More key changes. <laughs> you gotta borrow keys, to toss it out. No, I love it. <laughs> Stir some keys. All three of these songs have come back to D minor, like as their main key. I wonder if that's on purpose. Some Peter Gabriel, I see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, this like has. Kind of that, that, that industrial action. rock kind City of city nightlife esque, yeah. But that's not what's happening in the trailer, right? Oh no. Well, I mean, it's it's it's, it's a train heist. Yeah. Okay. But so you've got you've got this stuff that kind of fits in. It's in very there. urban. Yeah. Right. Um. And you know technology, <laughs> which is that's a line, and then so then when the lyric starts up, you start to get more insight on background for Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Take 
Oh, I love that. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's the chord, it's the harmony. That's good. I like it. That's good. Also, yeah, very revolution as uh, lyrics. That's Jeff's voice in there too. What do you mean? The who? The harmony. Oh, 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 okay. I heard jazz when I was just, yeah. <laughs> It's a jazz voice. No. <laughs> That's Jeff. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. It's very... It reminds me of the Pokemon opening. <laughs> Yeah. Uh oh. Um, let me get the cat down. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I always love it when the guitar man like switches into the vocal line. Who plays guitar on this track? Like, whoever's the guitarist I know is doing a real bang up job. I know Williams is a multi instrumentalist, but I don't know I don't know what his specialties are. Fair. So Well, kudos to the guitarist, cause whoever he, she, they are hey, is, there's they're putting good work. There's some stuff later that ends up having horn lines in it and I'm really hey. curious about that. Yeah, like, like saxes and trumpets and it's fantastic. And, uh -huh. and in my mind I'm like, okay, who do I know in Boston <laughs> that's probably recorded because I... That might know, yeah. I, I don't know if they record it in Boston or if they record it somewhere else, but I'd be curious to find out. Love me a good piano outro. It's a good moving line. I like that a lot. Fun. See, again though, with the D minor, like it's, I, this is probably me reading too much into it, but like all of these songs so far have used that minor key as like either like a heavy starting motif or just a heavy motif through it. Um, that was fun. Minor keys are so much more fun in general. Agreed. I mean... What, um... What did that remind me of? Because the whole, the whole, you know, industrial, like, breakbeat, uh, or I might be using the wrong terminology, but the, the very fast-moving, um, beatboxy feel of how that started, uh, that was very frantic. Um, mm -hmm. does that specifically play into her backstory of... You know, someone who probably was like the that. <clears throat> I don't think that specifically does. I think that just involves more of the what's going on within the trailer. Yeah. But um, okay. Fair. But kind of looking back on it at the same time, I could see where. I mean, it's a woman who's on the run. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Ask or it puts so, out that energy. Yeah. So that kind of idea of like, oh, okay, well, that seems to like fit. A yeah. little bit more of, um, because when you think about the a, character, you a think character like identity? she's kind of yeah. Because you think, uh, I don't want to say reserved, but for lack of a better word, right now, like kind of reserved. She's guarded, go, very guarded, no, very guarded, and stuff like that. So um, be for for reasons, yes. for so, very yeah, specific so, reasons. So that would be you could. I guess you could probably say that ends up being like kind of that inner, like. Frantic. There, yeah, there's that kind of frantic, like, I don't want someone to find out about this, or I need to keep this hidden, but it's, yeah. it's still constantly, like, kind of surging in you. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, like, I, I mean, that's, when you're in hiding, it's every, well, everything's also, on a racial you know, edge. a racial minority, technically, in the show, that right. she's, all, she's always going to be on edge. Right. I, I, enjoy, I enjoyed the compositional of that. Uh, I think it was quite, 
quite fun. Uh, shout out to Jeff with them high notes. That was tasty. Oh that yeah. That was clean. Oh, get ready for the next soundtrack. That was. Oh, that was get ready. like not only was that clean. I think. Oh gosh, it was either like a <laughs> fifth or a seventh jump where he just hits like a high D out of nowhere, and I was just like, whoa, yay! You're, love you're gonna, me. You're gonna like some of the future songs. Love me a tenor. There's another song that's a duet um, between him and Casey Lee rotating. That was going to be my next thing because Casey matches the le- the vocal line that Jeff puts out first, and their timbres are so similar. Yeah, you're gonna have because a- he's a light tenor and she's yeah. she's a we'll bit just, of a breathy soprano esque. No, when you talk about similar timbres, we'll just just put that in your back pocket for a little right. bit. Right. Yeah. Because there's yeah. something else that comes up. Just the weaving of it. Yeah. I'm just, excited to see how their voices are going to mingle. Yeah. When you, yeah. Good you picked up on the, on the colors and the voices because that's important. Yeah, right. He is a really light tenor. Okay. <laughs> so next is I Burn, which is Yang's basic, her theme, basically. Yeah. I'm and, stoked to hear this. And it was used in the yellow, <laughs> yellow trailer. This is... This is the actual track, though, as opposed to the yellow trailer mix. Oh, because that one has the other three songs at the beginning of it, kind of like background uh, sound. Because she she enters into a nightclub, right. so those songs are those songs playing in the background. So they, the yeah, they utilize stuff for, <clears throat> for for diegetic over the dialogue. Yeah, and, uh, it's so good. Go. And then her, then her All when she circle. starts her little fight scene, then her music starts. Right? Okay. So this is straight into basically her. I form. burn. Yeah. Yes. Which is really good too. Not eyeball. Just I, the letter I. Yeah, yeah. I can see where people probably be like, but her eyes are red. And be like, um, too much. Cause you're, you're thinking too hard. <laughs> too hard. You're already thinking too hard. Breathe. Yeah. All right. So let's see. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> you, you wanted guitar. <laughs> I did. This is exactly what I was thinking of. Okay. Yeah. Bam, bam, bam. Boom, boom, boom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I like this one better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he really does like this one. <laughs> Getty, Getty Lee tribute. <laughs> How that's so froggy. I love that. So another comment I've noticed, or another thing. Right. Hey, I get the rug. Yeah, right. Oh my lord. These these do feel like fourteen year old lyrics. I will say that. Not that they're bad, but the the wordplay, the No, I could totally see that, but the other They feel younger to me. And I think I don't know if it was intentional or not, it might just been a great synchronicity. Oh, okay. But I'll agree with that. But then I think about the age of the characters that we're talking about within no, the No, show. no, no, that definitely fits. And so now it's kinda of like, oh, you know, okay. And, you know, whether that if was, you use two words that are too highbrow, it's like, well they wouldn't have to play. I think so. I mean, whether it was purposeful or not, it fits I'll take very it. right. Yeah. Right. So all of Yang's bad jokes, more or less, give me the same reaction to this. <laughs> oh. This is the other side. Two, of- 2004 call. <laughs> I wanted to see his reaction to this too. Actually, really, well. they want they want their Lincoln Park tribute back. Well, this song was written in 2006. Really, really? Oh, yeah. No. Who was the song written? Wait, you, you have a device oh. in your hand. I was like, what are you looking at me for? <laughs> you have a glowing oracle of wisdom in your hand. You can look we up whatever you, you want. Do. I don't hate rap breakdowns, but I think they're silly, so. show came out in 2013, Yeah, if I remember right. Probably like so. 2011, 2012. So mm-hmm. this is... 
it fits her personality. Yeah. I, th- I think it's are you right on the nose. And I just because the second that started happening, I was just like this. Oh, yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, I've done I've done that when Yang comes on screen sometimes. But <laughs> and they and they use that. It's not. It's not all the time. I would say there's at least one track that has kind of like the hip hop breakdown, rap breakdown yeah, kind of yeah, punching yeah. in it. Which, you know, it's one of those borrow borrow a style right. that fits for this particular character, fits this situation. Very or TV show. Yeah. yeah. Um, a la Pokemon, a la Yu Gi Oh! sometimes, Digimon. Yeah. Well, yeah, because. Yeah, it fits. Um, All Many of our overarching comments will end with the phrase, yeah, it, it, but at the end of the day, it fits really well. Right. Right. I'm not, and also, yeah, nothing the, so far I've been looking to comment as a criticism. Merely observations. And I, I don't take many of them as criticism. I think these are all very well made. Right. I'm quite a fan of all of this. Um, okay, so let's see what we got. Um, gold is mm-hmm. the next one, which will be a genre departure. Oh boy. Mm, that's right. <laughs> a little bit. I like that. Okay. Um, so, uh, I'll just leave it at that. Here All we right. go. Okay. All right. Like I said, genre departure <laughs> from the previous stuff. That's still Casey. Yep. Yeah, I see what you mean with the vocal shifts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, for a 14-year-old, pretty darn good. Oof. So even if her chest voice, if she doesn't, I'm noticing that she has a lot of flexibility in her voice. The less she pu- the less she pushes the chest notes, mm-hmm. which is fine. I, I like both, but it's it's surprisingly dexterous. <laughs> that song is. This yeah, right. is also very J-pop. <laughs> oh, in a different way, in a different. You know, you kind of hit up the disco vibe to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The fast moving strings. Ooh! Ooh! That was amazing. <laughs> I'll never say no to disco strings. Agreed. It just adds a little bit of everything. Right. Wow. <laughs> yep. A little wild, a little wild guitar. <laughs> Don't go breaking my heart. Right. Mm. <laughs> Again, ah, oh, chord changes are so lovely. So this is this song is really to pair the sisterhood of Yang and Ruby. Well, sometimes I'll do it from point of views of characters. So this could be Yang addressing Ruby. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. As opposed to just a general pairing. I mean, but but, well, the, but the point is to at least have those two personalities in one song to um, some degree. Yeah, or like remember we talked about background motivations yes. and stuff like that. Yeah. So this would be something that like and the protective older sister. Right. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> Speaking of Exhibit A. Yeah. <laughs> As an older sibling myself, it obviously hits close to the heart. Yep. Yeah. Oldest sibling, excuse me.
watching you out of the corner of my eyes, trying not to laugh, because like the second the the second the strings go up the scale and I see you start moving. <laughs> <laughs> well, Goose and I have synchronicity on that anyway. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God, that, that, Man. I love that vocal line so much. It's ready for to come back. God, I love that line so much. <laughs> I'm such a sucker for it. There, there are certain things that I, I have very formulated opinions on, and there are other things where I'm very easy to please, and that is one of them. A little moving upper harmony moving, of the voice. Moving harmonies make me a happy man. <laughs> That's lovely. It's... As, as we get further into the process of the other soundtracks, and then you're yeah. also seeing volume you know, 3, 4, 5, 6, along with Sterling and Mary, mm. you're going to notice that... And I mentioned this a little bit before, that the harmonies... Like st starts to lean on those more as like an effect, even if the everything else doesn't drop out. But just to really like, yeah. okay, I re I really need to punch this word or this meaning a little so it sticks out. Mm -hmm. So but, we add more people. Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, but I don't want it to be. I don't want it to be you know vocal fry or yelled or right. It, I don't want it to stick out like that. It needs to be a, a different way that you'll see that it starts to happen more and more, which. How exciting I did. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's like so much to look forward to. Matthew's like, oh darn. Yeah. <laughs> what a shame. Um, that was lovely. I mean, very, that was quite nice. Yeah. And, and like, not only is it a, a very divergent shift in what we heard before, I personally enjoyed it as a palate cleanser. Okay. Like, like just because, you know, lighter, lighter instrumentals, it was just like, oh, this is nice. Now, right. The, mm. the, the sherbet of the soundtrack. So. <laughs> That's, I love um, Sherbert. I love Sherbert, right. Or would you say the Neapolitan of the song? <laughs> uh, okay. So the next one goes back to what we talked about before of there is a tune that is on the soundtrack. But it's not in the season. It is not within the season and is an allusion to or a, you know, it's pointing the way towards future story or do something you know, that might be coming up. Do you know what season you first hear this track in? Three. Heard. All right. Which is you're what, about to see. Well, right. wh which is one of the reasons why, <clears throat> because people have asked on YouTube, well, are you going to ask guys to need to read, you know, review the soundtrack, review, and it's okay. <laughs> but I wanted to wait until it was right before yeah. season three so that when we listen to season season episode volume whatever <laughs> we, uh, so many terms that are just slightly different i can't all hold all the these terms so volume three yeah which you're about to watch yes. on sunday which is day after tomorrow um since this song will appear on that as an actual use thing because the other tradition that i really like um and there's a song coming up in a minute as well that was in volume one that kind of starts another tradition mm. which there's Cut usually there's usually like a particular scene in a, a volume where when the music starts because it's an actual not score but soundtrack yes thing that's being used shit's going down yep for better or for worse but right. it's like oh oh here we go like something is going to happen that's Probably a bit more special than the rest, right? We take yeah. the hornet. It's nest. a trigger. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is going to be one of those. Okay. But for volume three. Fun. Which means. It's which means when I'm watching this and I start hearing this, I'm just. I'll probably already know, but I'm just gonna be like, ah, oh, here we go. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. But it's a. It's alluding to like future story as well. Yeah. Yes. And so yes. thinking where they put this back in volume one. What's the name of this track? I may fall. Yeah. How foreboding. Yeah, I may fall. That sounds well, very... You're just going to have to right. read the lyrics and listen to it and Getting fucking all... figure it out. That sounds like all my vibes to me. Yeah. <laughs> all, all your bass are belong to us. All your bass are belong to us. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> all right. Ready? Here we go. Hmm. 
It physically takes me a second to realize, is that a man singing? <laughs> is, I, bro, not a con. So, I actually could have told you that she probably doesn't have perfect pitch. Mm -hmm. Because when she chest notes, mm -hmm. if you look for it, most of her high notes, every note is slightly scooped into from the lower. Yeah, and sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes, I could be wrong, but I think like she might have sung the note multiple times and have it lightly mm -hmm. into, into one note because it's, there are some of her high notes that sound like she's singing on and off the pitch at the same time. Do I need to pause this for you? No, you're good. <laughs> I can do both. Okay, I'll just check. I just want to be sure. I'll go into more detail. Okay. Let's see. Let me know. I want those high notes. Just remember those high notes. Oh, yeah, both. Yeah. Yes. That was nice. I love that. I love that a lot. That's that's a little that gives me chills. Just the whole drop down. Yeah, I love that a lot. <laughs> Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's the little things, man. That that's really good. That makes me happy. I'm excited to see where that pops up in season three. So, referring back to what you were saying about the perfect pitch and stuff like that, it's one of those things where I could almost see it as a style choice as opposed to not an ability thing. But at the same time, um, context included, that is an ability thing. I'm pretty sure. Sorry. You finish. Right, but what I'm <laughs> what I'm saying is like, like scooping into certain things or whatever. No, I is but, yeah. the, but the other side of that is, if you have someone who's a younger vocalist, even if they have perfect pitch. Oh yeah. The the musculature. And I could give you a hearing. speech on that. I screwed. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah, where it's like the first two years of college. Yeah, yeah I, I I had this, and I would just. I, so many times in voice lessons, my teacher would be like, you are not on pitch. And I'm just like, why? And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but it's, but you're totally. Which is, is, which is why I never assumed that she did. Yeah. But it was like, it's. You're just curious. Yeah, yeah. I was really curious. Because it's, it's really on, especially when it's on the brink of that comfort zone. That is true. Yeah. You when, know, as like, opposed to something that would be a little bit more reserved and within your speaking range or your or yeah. fluttery yeah. yeah no no don't get me wrong like all of her all of her like i'm not sure if she has these notes notes she is like right there right it, it's not wavering it's not flaky um 
It's very, it's very powerful. So. Time. I like that. As I've said now, like five times in a row, that I may fall just makes me so happy. Oh, Mute, uh, uh, full vocal instrumental synchronicity that takes you out of the time for like a hot second. Another another thing that I'm easily pleased by. You're right. Okay. So, um, I really yeah, I like totally. this one. Okay, so this next tune is actually the first tune that I ever heard. Hmm. Okay. And I don't even remember. Really? I don't remember where I heard it. I mean, obviously it was on YouTube, or but I don't. Yeah. I don't remember the context of like if it was just one of those two a.m. rabbit hole listening uh, to different styles of music. You know, a lot of musicians will just sit there and be like, "What's next?" It's like, "Oh, look, country. What's that? Oh, prog rock. Oh, what's you know?" And just kind of just guilty. So um, I may or may not have done that a couple times. Three thirty right? in the morning, and you're just like guilty. Ah, I should go to bed. Yeah, it's like, well, we've got to be up in an hour. Might as well keep going. Yeah, right. So oh, right. So the um, happened. we're all in. So now. I heard this tune. And then, um, and I, I remember hearing about or recognizing, you know, Ruby, RWBY, mm. like, whether it was shirts or other, you know, merch and stuff like that. Well, you were a real person blue guy, so I'm sure you, you know, so you've known Rooster Teeth, so you probably saw it there too at some point. Well, yeah, mm. and so, but I never, I never dove into the series. Yeah. And then when I heard this tune, I was like, okay, that is so well done. Ah, uh -huh. I need to check out the series because if they're willing to put this much time and effort into getting the music to be a certain way, or even if it's not the score, at least it's this is related to the show. And it's this polished. Yeah, and it's yeah. this yeah. polished or it sounds like this, then I should check the rest of this out. And then yeah. that's how I got in the series. So The rest was history. Yeah, speaking of rabbit holes. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So, the, um, so the background for this tune is, just so you know what's going on, is... It's Ruby is the first vocalist. Like ah. that's the uh, that's the approach yes. that you're coming from, and it's Ruby's mother, who obviously at this point in the show or whatever else, you know, she's not there. You know, we talked about that and actually see we two a little did, bit, but, but, but she's but she is not part of the show. Yeah, and it's she is believed dead. Yes. And when I say believe dead, I'm not saying that as like trying to hide a spoiler or something. No, 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 I know, but it's, it's just, yeah, just reminding where we, where I am yeah, in right. the story. So she's believed dead. Yes. And Oh, cute. Well, or very so, sad, depending on... Right, and mm -hmm. so this is post her death, this is the conversation that Ruby is having with her mother. Aw. Whether that's, you know an internal dialogue possibly right. or something or it's just trying to shed some maybe some backstory that kind of scenario but that's the, context really, with the, the two. interesting thing is when it comes to the context with <laughs> when we were talking about really timbre like and stuff earlier yeah is it so casey lee williams is singing ruby's part casey lee's mom Aww, is singing the mom's part that's cute as all hell and so you'll hear a similarity and yet a an older, right. darkened version. Right, right, right. Yeah. And it's not Casey, that's her mom. Right. Actually so singing the mother's part. Does her mom, part. like, actually sing, or is that just a... I'm, that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that's mean, really cool. Okay. Um, and then sweet. the last thing before we started is earlier, like, in... I think it was the very first tune, there was an obvious, like, fade out and, like, a count to four and come back in. Yeah. So... There will be a similar kind of thing, I guess you could say. Mm. But what makes it what makes it hitch differently is it comes in on the end of four ah. into the next thing, as opposed to so it sounds Starting off the kilter. New measure, yeah, yeah. So it sounds off kilter. So instead of coming on beat one of the next measure, it's like coming on the end, end of, of four, four to like hit you. Okay. You know, into the next thing. So anyway, just yeah, this is a really really good tune. What's so, the name of this song? Red Light Roses Part Two. Ah. Uh, uh. For what it's worth. Yeah, right. they just call it part two. Alright, so here we go. I couldn't take it, couldn't stand another minute. Couldn't bear another day without you in it. All of the joy that I had known for all my life was stripped away from me the minute that you died. She sounds different. Had you in my life was all I ever wanted. But now without you, I'm a soul forever haunted. Can't help but feel that I had taken you for granted. No way in hell that I could never comprehend this. I wasn't dreaming when they told me you were gone. I was wide awake and feeling that they had to be wrong. That's a lot of life. <laughs> but, how cute. <laughs> Good 
good fill. I need like that. See, some of these vocal lines are very odd to me. I like them a lot, but it's just like, I, did, I don't hear it in any genre I listen to. So I like, yeah. whoever's putting the music together is putting very unique vocal lines across very normal chords. Just try not to cut yourself on the edge. I love that tritone. Yeah, I really right, love yeah. That tritone. Stuff like that. That's a, like. Oh, that's not one. We switch to the mom. That's the mother. Still. Okay. Still, when did it start? That whole refrain with the mom. I didn't notice. Wow. Really? No. You need the voice change? I'll yeah. Listen to it the next time. <laughs> well, now it's three back back to Ruby. Yeah, yeah. I didn't notice. Yeah. Here's the mom. Now I hear it. Wow, that's that daughter. No, I I, I got it. Now. Wow. Probably the easiest to hear pads out this Oh, probably. What was that? Yeah. Yeah, it'd be easier for him to hear if he had both of your buds in. Oh. But I got it. I got it. I like. So, what I mentioned before about the different tunes on the soundtrack giving some kind of background or context to characters and motivations and histories and whatever. Mm -hmm. So this is the one where you're like, well, it doesn't really match Ruby's personality and it doesn't seem like that's something that she would be, you know, going on about, you know, based on what they've seen in the show, right? Yeah. And so my thought was, if you've seen, you know, if if her mom had disappeared, basically out of the picture, um, dead, alive, whatever, but the fact is she's gone. Yeah. Right? So, if that had happened when she was coming out of toddler age, Yeah. right? Like, because we don't, you know, people, human beings in general, don't start to get, like, their own cognitive conceptual thoughts until they hit seven or eight. Yeah. Right? So, um, once, so if she's at that age to understand that, like, she's not around anymore and I'm, and not really understanding why conceptually yet, because you're at that cusp. Mm -hmm. Right. So fast forward to when she's 11. Yeah. If this is the thought process, because we don't see her as a character until she's 13, 14. Yeah. So back up two years about, she's already gone through this process, similar, you know, like mm -hmm. maybe what this tune is kind sort of, of anger, the anger stage of it. It, yeah, round, yeah, yeah. it, rounds, out, it rounds out her backstory a little bit. Like, you're just right. how she into, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, 
she's influenced by her mom possibly to get, become a huntsman. Right. You know, that kind of thing. But what's the backstory of why did she come to that decision so early? Or what? Well, okay, well, this this gives, highlights that. Right? That gives, yeah. So I know a lot of people talk about how, like, this doesn't seem to match the character. And it's like, well, it doesn't match the character now. Yeah. But maybe it matches the character two years before we run into the character. Mm -hmm. And works you know? as a part of an origin concept. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. So... So anyway, that was kind of like my thought on it uh, mm -hmm. when, because you know people have brought that up and that's great. I'm, you know, right. They're, it breeds discussion. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So. Quick thing, you can cut this. I prefer you cut it. Uh, I just noticed. Dicks. <laughs> so the next one is wings, and this was used after the piece, Monty passed away, it was also like a temporary kind of ode to Monty. In memoriam, kind of, yeah. yeah. Not not officially, but as far as like, from what I understand, like, I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head, I remember people had talked about that or mentioned that, that this was used kind of as that. But there is actually a tune on volume three that is an official. Ah, ode to Monty. Yeah, right. Oh. But until that, but until that tune came out as part of the volume three soundtrack and the concept and yeah. all that kind of stuff, that people kind of latched onto this one a little bit for that. Yeah. But the background of this tune is more along the lines of kind of like. Uh, well, I'll let you. I'll let you figure it out. <laughs> Incubus-esque. That's very Christian rock to me, mm -hmm. but I still got chills in the chorus, so. Mm -hmm. Has this music ever been performed in concert? Because this makes for a great crowd song. Like there's the references, like 12 hours, that's how long they search for Blake. Oh. You know, stuff like that. I don't always catch those, so it's good that you yeah. <laughs>
Actually, it also sounds a bit like Kogi. Hmm? It sounds a little bit like Kogi as well. A little bit. <laughs> In some, some of their anthems. <laughs> a good anthem, though. It is a good anthem. It feels very genuine. Like, I don't care what the lyrics would say. She's doing a very... Yeah, the presentation. Good, it feels very from the heart. More kudos to Casey. That's sweet. And a nice way to end the, the OST. Yeah, and that was the... So... At the end of a volume, yeah. you've, when you saw volume one and two, it's the same way. There's always that longer tune. Yeah. That, you know, yeah, that yeah, kind of yeah. like closes everything out. Yes. And then there's the after credit or whatever. So that would be the tune that like rolled while the mm -hmm. entire lyric or there's credits mm -hmm. were rolling and stuff yeah. like that. So the um I like the rhythm show even though it was like super simple and it's a rhythm that's done time and time again. Time and time again, but like um at the end of so there's that intro and they revisit that, but there's right. the intro and um like it's okay. On yeah. the, so it ends up being the um um it's split up, so it's not on, all on a downbeat, but like it's on one, and then the and of two, mm. and then on four. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, kind of thing. That's super syncopated. Yeah, but the fact that they, it was the same pitches, because the lyrics, you know, syllables fit, but it's the same pitches and it's the same rhythm to tag out both of those lines before it goes into the next section or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's kind of just like little choices like that make a big difference, I think, when it comes to cool it's stuff. It's all in the details, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's... Yeah. When you're writing stuff for a show like this or a soundtrack like this, it's, you know, it it's not so much of the idea that, well, everything's been done before, so we'll just regurgitate it. It's, right. It's You still have to pick the right stuff at the right time yeah, exactly. to fit this and to fit that. It has to be appropriate, then, yeah, not, yeah. Just over, not just redone. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's like, can't figure out what to do? Let's do an EDM song. It's hey. like, it's yeah, it's not that easy. And if you, it, still, yeah. you can do that, but then you have to pick how that's going to sound within that genre. Right to borrow, to use, that would match this other thing. Yeah. So, and if it were just redone, it would lack the sincerity that that piece obviously had. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt it, though. Yeah, that first chorus, and I was just like, you know, I am cold, but I also am getting goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the air conditioning vents right on me. However... It is, actually. That is actually pouring right at me. However, <laughs> I, I am getting goosebumps because it was... I, I, I suck it for a good anthem, and it, it hits home. Any anything anything that's very obviously vulnerable is you empathetic. just wait. Right. Oh yeah. man. <laughs> As a songwriter, when you're sitting there and you're given like, okay, so here's here's the characters, right. here's the show. Obviously, in order to write a score, everything needs to be already filmed. Yeah. Yes. You know, you that's when it comes to score writing. You send him essentially a finished product. He just he right. then right. Adds yeah. background. Yeah. And so as the plots develop, and as the animation quality and facial expressions and other things get more and more detailed and things that they're able to do, then the music by way can get better because there's more information for the songwriter or for the person writing the score. Exactly. To 
have information yeah. or see little cues and stuff like that and be able to like include that with what's going on. So well, the music and, will get better. Oh, yeah, and it's not, already... Not, yeah, not just bad now, but right. it gets even better, I think, as it goes along. It matches the quality, increasing yeah. quality of the show. Yeah, and there's more details and more of those other things because you just, you have the ability as the composer to see more details in the finished yeah. product, so it lends more to you to be able to want to put more details and cues and other things. And more themes to work off of, too. The concept of leitmotif only grows with content. So. Oh, yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. so do we want to do volume two as well today? Soundtrack? Oh. Sorry, it really hurts right now. I'm sorry. So we're back, considering that he just smashed his foot. Oh. Moving. <laughs> oh. So oh. we had to kind of cut away a little bit because of yeah, <laughs> some... Ow. <laughs> so on that note, um, we'll uh, let's see the the last two things of Volume Two come out this coming Tuesday. Yep. Okay. And then I'll have the first stuff of Volume Three to like go straight out the next Tuesday after that. So okay. there won't there won't be a break or anything. And as far as like these guys reacting to content, that, will still keep going out. Yeah, of but, course. Yeah. But we just wanted to like sit down and at least do volume one soundtrack, and then um, at the end of volume three, uh, we'll do we'll do volumes two and three soundtrack just to get back to back. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah. Sounds good. And that way, everyone's on the same page because there's happen. there's some there's some spoilery stuff, obviously, like we talked about within the soundtrack. Oh and yeah. So, so once you've seen volume three, mm. it's kind of a a better cutaway of like, okay, good, it didn't it didn't spoil one of the big clockwork moments that are coming up. So. Right. Yeah. All right. So, cool. And by the time you guys record the other things, I'll be in Puerto Rico for those two weeks. So. Oh. Yeah, right. you'll be yeah. Conducting um, an orchestra. Right. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Plug. There's a lot of uh. A lot of things going on. Yes. There's a lot of things going on in June and July yes. where we're filming a bunch of stuff now. Yes. To, uh, yeah roll out because all of us are at opposite ends of the earth doing yes. things. All right. So, uh, I guess we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Dicks. <laughs> and scene. <laughs>